This sweet, sweet little video is protected by fair use. It is not for profit. It is for free. You can share this freely. It is for the purposes of criticism, commentary, and teaching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> this video is for mature audiences only, adults only, strong language, strong themes, adults only, viewer discretion is advised. Please like this video if you enjoy my content. It takes half a second. Hammer that like button. Hammer it. Show YouTube that you support my channel. Thank you. Cypher is one of the most controversial characters in The Matrix. He was not a typical villain with superficial motivations. Cypher had a philosophy that led him to betray his crewmates. But what if The Matrix Resurrections proved Cypher right? The analyst shares many commonalities with Cypher, including their perception of humanity. Would you like to know why? Then welcome to Matrix Explained. Cypher felt like he was tricked by Morpheus and was tricked. And he also felt like knowing the truth was shitty and more difficult. And it is. And he felt like he wanted to go back and eat steak, fake steak, but it tasted very real fake wine, be rich, and sell out. Sell out his friends, and that's what he did. And this video tries to attempts to justify his choices, that the Matrix can't be defeated, that you might as well not fight back, that it's better to be asleep than to be awake and aware that you're in an evil place. And uh, anyway, I thought I would just begin it this way. I don't know if you've watched... I'm sure most people have watched the first Matrix movie. I think it was made in 1999, something like that. It's been a long time, though. It's been somewhere close to 25 years, I believe, since the first one came out in the series. To the desert of the real. After meeting Cypher, one would think that he was a somewhat egotistical and jealous person. He was envious of Neo because he got Trinity's attention. Cypher was tired of living in fear and struggling to survive, so he decided he would find a way to go back to a more pleasant life. These are just parts of Cypher's motivations. Cypher warned Neo to run from agents. A little piece of advice. You see an agent? You do what we do. Run. In the original script, Cypher actually warned Neo not to believe in Morpheus because he was responsible for the deaths of other people. So Cypher wasn't completely evil. He was just trapped in a difficult situation that he did not choose to be in. Cypher deeply hated Morpheus because he believed that Morpheus lied to him by not explaining what the Matrix was. Why, oh why didn't I take the blue pill? If you would have told us the truth, we would have told you to shove that red pill right up your ass. From Cypher's point of view, he was stuck in a group of religious fanatics and fighting in a war that he did not believe in. When Morpheus offers the pills to Neo, he doesn't warn Neo of what he's signing up for. He simply tells him that no one can be told what the Matrix is. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. So did Morpheus manipulate and lie to Cypher? Psychologist Stephen Hassan, an expert on cults, developed a model to try to detect these control groups. It's called the Bite Model, which we have already discussed in an older video. The way Morpheus offers the pills falls into the control information category. Deception A. Deliberately withhold information B. Distort information to make it more acceptable and C, lying by omission. A lot of YouTube channels do this, content creators. Matt McKinley will say, well, I worked in insurance, but he doesn't give you the rest of it. He doesn't say it was hostage and kidnapping insurance. He'll say Pam works for pharma, but she, he doesn't say f she's an executive for Pfizer. 
See what I'm saying? This is what they do. This one, very common. Deliberately withholding information, they do that as well. Gatekeepers. They won't go all the way and tell you what Janus is. It's good and evil, God and the devil. Two and one. Two and one. They go all the way on my channel. All the way. All the way in. Okay? All the way in. I'm not trying to use sexual innuendo here. I promise people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I'm not going to say balls deep or anything immature like that. Of course. Of course. Sorry. According to the Bite model, Morpheus's actions are sectarian, and he uses manipulation, lies, and other elements to add soldiers to his cause. Many of the Red Pills, like Trinity, were content to fight in this war, but others, like Cypher, felt cheated. Even worse, when they wake up to the real world, they listen and follow these prophecies and other absurd things that were false to begin with. This is one of the reasons why Niobe left Morpheus. Morpheus's fanatism was leading him down a dark path. This brings us to Matrix Resurrections. More than six decades since Cypher... So, I don't know if the guy doing this video is a robot, but he says fanatism. Fanatism, I mean, it, I don't know, it's just weird that the way people pronounce words these days, it's like they're, they've never heard them before. It's strange to me. It is, it's just strange. Like, I don't know, sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's an AI reading, if, if they're using a robot voice to read their video, the uh, text, the script for the YouTube video. It's very strange, but you never heard that word before. The way that he pronounces it is just odd, you know, and I pick up on that stuff. His betrayal, his philosophy lingers. The red pill shepherd said to Neo, everything was simple back then. People wanted to be free. It's different now. Sometimes I feel like people gave up. Like the Matrix won. Remember that Shepard wasn't born when Morpheus was fighting to free the humans from the Matrix. Shepard wasn't privy to Morpheus's strategies of persuasion to recruit. So again, Shepard wasn't privy. It's privy. It's not privy. Okay, so did he write this himself, or does he have a robot voice reading it for him? Like, what is going on here, even with this Matrix video on this channel? What's going on? What is the truth? What is real? What is not real? What's artificial? to free the humans from the Matrix. Shepard wasn't privy to Morpheus's strategies of persuasion to recruit new potentials. It's thanks to bugs that we discovered that the red and blue pills are still used to wake people up. But we also learned that Morpheus's fanatism destroyed Zion, or at least he caused a faction to leave the city to build a new one, Io. Several times during the movie, it was mentioned how Neo may have subconsciously wanted to stay inside the Matrix. Io. One and a zero binary, and also there's I.O. ports on computers. So it's interesting. The This is odd. I'm going to end the video. Well, not end the video, end this part of the video soon. I can't cover this guy's whole thing, but... Um, very strange. paint the sky with rainbows. But here's the thing, the sheeple aren't going anywhere. They like my world. They don't want this sentimentality. They don't want freedom or empowerment. They want to be controlled. They crave the comfort of certainty. And that means you two, back in your pods, unconscious and alone, 
just like them. The analyst vindicated Cypher. He proved Cypher right, showing that the analyst is not just a genius that created the perfect prison, but that most people, given the knowledge and choice, would choose to stay in the Matrix. They already do. That's bad truth. They already do. You give them the truth, the truth, the truth of this place and the knowledge, and you show them. You don't just tell them. You show them videos. You show them the evidence. And the vast majority here want to stay here. They reject it. They lash out at the messenger. They will spew hatred and vitriol and venom in my face. They've done this to look at you like a stunned deer in the headlights or look like staring at you like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you to say these things, to question this event, to question this one, to question this realm? They don't want out of here. And they won't get out on their own. They won't be able to get out on their own. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? It is kind of important that you really understand this and you really focus and start thinking about this stuff on a deeper level, the way I've done for decades. Why do I say it that way? Because it is painful to try to help people, to help try to help liberate people and tell people that, you know, you can choose freedom or you can stay a slave and to see them choose slavery and to hear them say it, that they'll stay here if given a choice. <clears throat> Very painful. They're not like me. And I'm aware of it. I'm getting out of here. I hope that echoes in the minds and brains and, and, and dreams of people where they really understand, I'm getting out of here. I don't know who else is for sure, but I'm trying my best to help people see where they are. I want to stay in this fake fucking place and feel, quote, comfortable as a slave. Then you go do that, but I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I won't settle for slavery, and that's what it is. It's settling for slavery. I'm not doing that. Some people say, Stephen, you're so passionate about this. Well, it's only about freedom and eternity. Like, how could I not be? I can't fathom not being passionate about this. I don't know what is wrong with the, so many in this realm. I don't know what it is. But I know one thing. They're not like me. Somehow they're very, very different. And they'll settle for this shit. And I won't ever, 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 ever. Again, I hope that echoes in people's minds so that they realize he's not playing. He's not trolling. He's not pretending. He's not fucking acting. He's being authentic. He's doing something that's very rare in this realm. Being authentic and passionate and honest and saying what I really, really think, what I'm going to do, what I feel in my heart, in my heart. Maybe I should put it that way. Maybe that'll get through to people. I don't know how to really break through to people but I am doing my best. And I'm doing it in ways I don't see others doing. Really trying to reach into you and grab you and shake you up and wake you up. In ways that your spirit finally feels alive again rather than just a slave. I don't like slavery. I don't like seeing people enslaved. I don't like it at all. At all. Whether they're like me spiritually or they're a different species, I don't like slavery. I don't like slavery of, an an of animals in this realm. I don't like this place. I don't like the fucking design of this place. It's evil. It's sick. It's slavery. Suffering based. It's all based on suffering, this place. So to settle for this is unimaginable to me. I would never settle for this. I don't deserve this. And I'm not staying here. And I'm trying to help many get out of here. But you have a lot of breakthroughs to go through while you're here. To give yourself a real, real good chance of getting out. I'm a reluctant leader, but I'm sure not a follower. 
I never wanted to really be a leader. I don't want followers. I do want an army with me to fight this place. That's what I want. I want freedom. I want something you can't have within this matrix. That's what I want. Once that really sinks into you on a deep level, don't, and I'm not saying it to make you sad or depressed or despair, not at all, but just to realize you can't have freedom here. So it's very important if you want freedom to get out of here. That's the chance of freedom. It's not here. It's not within this place. There's no one in here that's free. Look at it that way if you want to. There's no one in here that's free in this matrix. No one. There is no freedom inside of here. There's wealth and fame and luxury and easier life, sure, but they're still not free. No one is free inside of here. Oh, again, open challenge. Tell me the channels where they're speaking like I do and saying these things the way that I do making videos the way that I do, that people keep saying, show me, name them, name these channels. My channel's a dime a dozen. You should be able to list 10, 12 easily. Easily. Where are they? Show me the clones of me. I want to see them. I want to talk to them. I want to watch their channels and see for myself. That is their home. They would not want Neo. Ever get sick of the lies and liars here? I do. Knowledge and choice would choose to stay in the Matrix. That is their home. They would not want Neo and Trinity to change anything. The analyst knows humanity so well that he is sure that the humans prefer the falsity of the Matrix over the horrors of the real world. What choice do the humans have at that point anyway? To live in a simulated reality where they might live relatively normal and peaceful lives? Or to be stuck in hiding in the real world? Io is a much better city than Zion, that is for certain. They are growing food, and they have an artificial sky that precipitates. But the city is still underground hiding in a dystopian world. There is no favorable option for the people to wake up. And perhaps this is the reason why Morpheus never explained what the Matrix was until after you take the red pill. At that point, it's already too late. Revealing the truth early could easily scare any potential into not choosing the red pill. The analyst understands that most people think like Cypher. They are selfish creatures who seek pleasure, not conflict. I don't want to be rich. You know, someone important. Neo was given this reward. For years, he was living a rather satisfying and comfortable life. Because maybe, somewhere deep down inside, Neo wanted to have that life that Cypher wanted. The only thing that makes Neo different from Cypher was Trinity. Her love for Neo gave him the reason to fight and to wake up from the Matrix. Come on, Neo! Fight for her! Cypher did betray Morpheus because he wanted to forget the horrors of the real world. But Morpheus brought about the end of Zion by ignoring the Oracle's warnings of a new threat. So who was the bigger egomaniac? But do you agree? Was Cypher right this whole time? Will humans always prefer the conformity of the Matrix? Do you feel not like yourself? I think it goes into a stupid ad there. Um, anyways, I want to break in here regardless. Are a lot of people selfish, pleasure-driven creatures? Human beings, uh, in other words, like perpetual pleasurists and others on here. There's others that have been on my channel that can't handle the truth. They run back to Team Evil. They run back to the mainstream. They run back to religion, Jesus, Christianity, you name it. I've seen it. I understand human psychology. The things that shock you don't shock me. 
You notice that? I'm not shocked about this stuff when it happens. I don't like it. I don't like betrayal. Nobody feels good when they get betrayed. But I'm not shocked that people are that weak. There will be people that will be saying for months on my channel, maybe years if my channel is able to stay up for years. I don't know how long this is going to stay up on YouTube. But there will be people saying to me repeatedly, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight this matrix. When the time comes, there'll be nowhere to be found. I'm aware of this already. This stuff doesn't shock me. I see ahead. I'm not at the level of the masses. And this is what you have to understand. We're not all the same. We're not all the same. Some of us are different in this realm. I'm not the same as a billion or two or seven or 25 billion others. Whatever the number is, it could be a billion, it could be seven billion, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, man, it doesn't matter. I know they lie about the population numbers. I know they lie about that. I know they lie about that. And I am kind of straining my fucking voice and I am kind of angry about certain things, but not, the, not even the betrayal. That's to be expected in this realm. That's what people do. Not all, but a lot. Again, not all do that. Don't think everyone is that way or get paranoid and think everyone in, in this world is going to betray you. Not all. Not all. But some will. Some have to me. Not just recently. Throughout my lifetime. I, wasn't, I didn't just wake up yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday. I'm not 20 years old or 30 years old. I've seen a lot already and learned a lot from it learned a lot from it, from abuse, from betrayal, from all the things I've gone through here in this place. Understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you do. I hope you do. Sharpen your discernment. Really work on that. Sharpen it. Hone it. Make it like a sword. Get very good at very proficient at using it, okay? And slice through the liars and the bullshit. Are you ready for something? You ready to see something that's not new? It's a blast from the past. You're going to see someone famous here, okay? Figure it out. It's right on the street, right in public at night. Recorded a long time ago. Not by me, but you'll see what I mean. You ever seen this before? Tell me in, in the comments or in the chat if this ends up being a, a live premiere. Mr. Rothschild, how you doing, sir? Can you tell us what went on at the Bilderberg meeting this year? Sorry? Can you tell us what went on at the Bilderberg meeting this year? I didn't get that last year, no. The Bilderberg? You weren't there? No. Not this year? What went on uh, last year? No, I wasn't there last year. You weren't there last I year? Think there? That was my cousin. Your cousin was there? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Do you have a couple minutes for us, Mr. Rothschild? We have a few additional questions for you. I, w I was, was asking a question inside it because I was saying the, um, the federal reason. The teeth, the face, the look. Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. But, you know, it is Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. That's who they modeled him on way back then. Okay? That's the character. Jacob Rothschild, Mr. Burns. All right? Mr. Burns is based off of Jacob Rothschild. Resemblance is uncanny. That's the way they do things. That's the way they do things. Like that? Anyway, that's how they do it.
I, I was I was asking a question inside it because I was saying that the um, the Federal Reserve is one of these organizations <laughs> that I know it's one of these organizations that a lot of people say is the source of uh, inhumane projects all across the world because it's a private bank that so was started by your family. Completely not true. I was also that earlier. It really isn't true. Well, you know, Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island, 1913, sir. I mean, but sir, just one thing. We could go on about how you know your family committed all these acts against society, but we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. And that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well. Like that? Watch him turn back when the New World Order was mentioned. So is this all scripted? Is uh, How did they get access to him with no security? How did they know exactly where it was going to be? It looks like New York City at night somewhere, some gathering. Was this scripted? Was this legit? This was uploaded to YouTube 11 years ago, 5.81 or 5.8 million views, sorry. There's a donate, sorry, sorry, as Canadians say, saying it in my live stream earlier. Uh, donate button right there, of course. Uh, we are change. You know, a big organization, a big site, a big ch YouTube channel, um, as above, so below, black and white, 867,000 subscribers. Uh, Luke Rudowski's been on, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tim Pool's show. I can't think of it. I don't watch that crap, but they have all this merch, you know. They've made a lot of money in all those years. So, anyways, uh, Think it's legit? Do you think he actually caught him with no security, just walking around in a black tie event, coming out somewhere out into the street? Probably one of the very richest men that we know of on Earth. I'm not saying he's the richest, but part of a very, very wealthy, controlling family that supposedly controls almost all the central banks in this realm, as far as we can tell, okay, is what I'm saying. Anyway, interesting, isn't it? I think so. Because I was saying that the um, the Federal Reserve is one of these organizations yeah. that. I know, it's one of these organizations that a lot of people say is the source of uh, inhumane projects all across the world because it's a private bank. That so was you, started by your family. You know, it's completely not true. I was all set earlier. It really isn't true. Well, yeah, you know, Jekyll Island, Island. Jekyll Island, 1913, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but sir, just one thing. We could go on about how, you know, your family committed all these acts against society, but we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. And that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well. We just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. And that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well... What do you, I mean, the Rothschilds family did start the Federal, you know, they divided Europe first, no, no, no. took over Europe, the Napoleon... Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> yeah. well, no comment on that, sir? It says don't took over Europe. The don't exaggerate. Napoleon. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> Tilted his head at a certain point. We go back to that part.
want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. And that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well, Right there, it really kind of tilted his head more to this side. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes and look at the look. Look at the look, okay? Yes, I know it's at night and it's not well lit, but look at the eyes and look at that. Just look at that. All right? You know what some would say? He's just a human being. He's just a human being. It's just We've heard that already for decades, some of us. You know, there's something beyond that going on here. Okay? Some will see it. Some won't. It might only be 10% or 20% of the viewers on my whole channel that see it. I don't know. I don't know how many are going to see it and how many won't. I'll tell you, there might be a 1,000 or 2,000 people that end up watching this video and there will only be like 90 to 110 likes. So it's usually only, you know, 10% or even less that like the videos, one out of ten. So there you go. I mean, do people understand? I don't. I don't know. Do they understand how important this is? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm seeing? And the smile on the teeth show. He stared and stared and just turned his head and stared. Stared at him. Does that look human? Does that seem like normal human behavior? I hope people really start seeing what's going on here in this realm. And you know why? It might help you beyond this realm. You might, if you see more here, you might say, yeah, you know what? I think maybe this place is controlled by something. It isn't quite human. Whether you want to call them entities, whatever you want to call them. C cups, D cups, I'm sorry, I had to make that joke, but whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to call them, it's up to you. But I hope you start seeing, 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 seeing what that is. So, for your sake, I already see what it is. I can see that. Hope you start to see. Hopping on over here with Ariana Rockefeller, and it's on CNBC, which, you know, is a big TV uh, mainstream, you know what? I won't even say it, but hopefully I'm allowed to cover this. Otherwise, I might have to just edit this right out of the video or something and clip it out. But we'll try it. We'll try it this way. This is fair use. It's for research educational purposes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, so me. your family has always been so private and so under the radar. They have always chosen to speak through their philanthropy. What is it like to have this much exposure and to have people paying so much for your family's stuff? Well, I think there's a time for private life and then there's a time for public life and to step forward. And this was really my grandparents' vision. And so it's an amazing time and it's so exciting to see the public's, you know, reception and appreciation of this uh, incredible sale. And Christie's has done just an amazing job curating it and, you know, protecting my, our family's privacy. but putting it out to the public in just a spectacular way. Now, everyone's wondering, well, what does the family think about, especially the younger generations, that so much stuff is being sold off? Didn't they want that stuff? All the family members, including yourself, were allowed to choose some items of your grandfather, David Rockefeller's, up to a million dollars. What did you choose? <laughs> well, I was uh, very happy to keep a beautiful bracelet that my grandfather had picked out for my grandmother and uh, I was happy to wear it to the Met Gala on Monday and honor my family's uh, you know, legacy and tradition and uh, to be able to keep that sentimental piece among uh, some other things. 
and uh, it's been it's been wonderful to see my grandfather's vision come to life for the collection. And you are an equestrian athlete, very, you know, have, have won so many events. You also have your own design company. You're very entrepreneurial. Do you think some of your great-great-grandfather's entrepreneurial genes have been passed down to you? I think so. You know, there's such a, um, a value of having a, a work ethic in my family and of working at working hard at whatever it is we choose to do and focus on. So. I definitely try and honor that and I love to work hard and uh, I'm excited to have founded my own business. And Don't you just love her and isn't, isn't her grandfather just a sweetheart? I mean, David Rockefeller, look at the eyes on that. Look at the eyes and look at the look on the face. Look at the eyes. You know the WTC buildings the, in Manhattan? You know who funded that project 33 years before you know what happened? This, 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 uh, this creature on the screen, I, I, I have to say it. I mean, I, I don't know what to call that. I'm sorry, but sorry, YouTube. I, you know, that's my opinion. Let's say that's my opinion. I can't say it's my view. YouTube seems to like the word opinion, but, you know, I'm going to flip through this. Not wonderful. Big smile here. And look at this. Oh, what a sweet grandfather, right? He's just so sweet. He's just so sweet. All the Rockefellers were, weren't they? Notice how she was schooled on how to how to dress, how to speak, rehearsed, and how, like schooling for this, uh, and etiquette and class and the way to hold her her hands this way, hand over the wrist, cross her legs, you know. Anyway, this is what they do. It's what they do. I can't say what they look at the masses like, but people say sometimes that the demons on here say that I look down on people, that these people look down on you. Rockefellers look down on you like you wouldn't believe. This is the Yogi Bear Picanuck Basket of David Rockefeller. Running total of the things they sold off, $765 million. So three quarters of a billion dollars of things, stuff sold at auction. Just stuff like this and artwork and not, not mansions and, you know, close to a billion dollars, three quarters of a billion dollars. All right. Things like this. That's from the picnic basket, these little forks that they'd use to take with them. This. They live lives in which they could buy whatever, whatever, whatever strikes their fancy, whatever they want, whatever they want. Some people would say they earned it. It's paid for by you. In the end, in a sense, no matter which way you look at it, if you really look into it, that's who pays for it all. This here looks like a tower with an angel, okay? Interesting, isn't it? I think that's that might be from Rockefeller Center, actually. Rockefeller Center um, with that um, Prometheus sculpture there. That's what I think that's from. It looks like it's a... A photo of that artwork right there. So, Father uh, at the Council of the Americas, quite often he was a big supporter. This glorious? You think this is glorious? Look at the black eyes here. Okay, she's got brown or hazel eyes. Look at her black eyes. The media. Incredible, isn't it? That might mean something. That might indicate something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for noticing. Most people don't notice this stuff. Most people in this realm don't notice anything anymore. Anything important. They can tell you what's on TV. They can tell you who starred in a certain movie. Uh, they can tell you what a baseball player, what team they're on, or 
a hockey player or a football player, but beyond that, they don't know anything. They don't know anything. That's what I see. was amazing and he really was meticulous about recording his uh, meetings and the names of people uh, that he would meet uh, and so it, it was wonderful it was in his office and it, it had its own room um, and uh, it's it's an incredible um, it, it has incredible history and you, you're right it would need it its now? own room right you know. because it, it was so big yeah <laughs> Yes, exactly. And our amazing family historian Peter Johnson has, uh, you know, been working on preserving it. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, it's in the process of being preserved, and it will, of course, go to the Rockefeller Family Archives. Fantastic. Does your family have a family archives? Anyone watching this this video? This lovely. You know, of course, I'm being sarcastic for the people that just can't pick up on that. But isn't this lovely? Really, I mean, wonderful, isn't it? See the artwork. Thinking of your generosity in having the paintings from you on view in the museum for a couple of months this summer. And you think of that there will be thousands of people enjoying these pictures that normally just you yourself and a few family members and friends are enjoying. Well, I thought this seemed to make a lot of sense. It's great. It's marvelous. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased we're doing it. All three on this wall, yes. and two are up, both Cezannes are upstairs. So from well, this house... Certainly the boy with the red... Yes, face. and the Cezanne um, still life. And the Cezanne still life. Yeah. And then besides that, it will be the Gauguin. That's right, and the Gauguin. And Picasso's Horta picture, and the Signac, the Fénéon. Mm -hmm. the amazing Fénéon picture. And what's amazing about the group, I think, as a whole... I want to break in here. There are people that say that the rich just buy artwork as investments or just as money laundering. Some of them do marvel at artwork because they can't create themselves. They can't paint. They have no imagination. They can't come up with things. They don't draw, they don't paint. They buy things that others created with their money, but they can't do it themselves. Do you understand? Do you understand? I don't know if you do. I don't know if you do. What am I getting at? It's not an ego thing, it's just the truth. I can do things they can't do. I can do things they can't do. And I'm aware of this. An advantage for me. You'll see what I mean one day. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. I have a plan. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. You can doubt me here in this realm, which is foolish in itself, but I am a demon slayer. They can try to mimic me, these psychos and demons. They will fail. I'll take them all on, all of them, and I'll win. I'll be victorious. I'm not afraid. I know what they are. I see them as they are. Is you look at 30 years of painting because they're from about 1880 to 1910 mm -hmm. and it's almost like a little art history survey yeah, right. and it's the opposite of what your intention was I know and I but bought each one because I liked it and it, it came became available I think that I was brought up having reasonably good taste and but in addition very good advice yeah uh, but I, in toto it becomes a real mm. portrayal well, of I, the beginnings of I, modern art. I do think I was awfully lucky in getting them, no doubt about that. 
quite honestly, to lend them for longer periods. At age 94, I'm <laughs> not sure I want it to be away for a year. I have to say, I, I've greatly enjoyed the ones in this room. Could you think of the way in which having your life filled on such a daily basis with art of, of this extraordinary nature well, I have affected no, you? I have no doubt that uh, it's contributed importantly to my day-to-day -day enjoyment. I mean, I just, I do look at them and I'm very aware of them and, and I love them. You know, I realize how lucky I am to be able to acquire them. They're an important part of my life. Yeah. And I think we're also, to Peggy's my wife, yeah. and I think our children enjoy them. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show him while I say something here in just a moment. Okay? Look in this realm that would watch this video 76,014 years ago. And most that would think of him would say, well, he's just a good man. He's hardworking. He was rich. They wouldn't see what I see at all. At all. Not at all. So the people that kind of take it for granted of, oh, well, it's obvious, you know, they, they don't get it. You don't get it. And the masses don't get it. Most people don't see what I see. I see something different here. Okay? I just want that to be clear, a little bit clear, if I can make it clear. There's more for you to ponder. Do they live the way you do? Do they live like you? Are they like you? Are they like you at all? Do they really care about you at all? Think about it. Think about it. Not stupid when it comes to having their own farms, cattle, food. I mean, they're not out there doing the work themselves. They have servants, obviously. I'm just saying it's all for them. It's all for them. They don't eat the same as you do. Okay? They don't just have whatever they can get at Walmart, grocery store, whatever grocery store you use, wherever you live. It's different. They're showing you this. It's not just me showing you. This. They're showing you this on purpose. This is part of it. They're showing you. They've been showing you for years. And I've known about this for a long time. I can't show... Well, what, some people say, why haven't you shown us this yet? I've only been doing this for a year. I have a million fucking years of stuff that I could show you. I can't show you everything in a day. I'm one person. How many hours do I have in a day? There's always people that complain. Why didn't you show us this already? There's so much to share. Who else is sharing for free on here? That's what I want to know. Who else is pouring their time into something on YouTube? They have their own cattle. They have their own food. They have their own vegetables. They have their own everything. Okay? That's what they have. They have the best of everything, and they don't have to eat like you do. They don't have to drink the water like you do. They don't have to do anything like you do. 
I'm not saying it to upset you. I'm saying it because it's true. That's why I'm saying it, because it's true. To break through and deprogram you, the ones that are still straggling along here, that don't quite get it. Trying to deprogram you, that's why I'm doing this. No one else seems to want to do that on YouTube. It's not easy. You get a lot of hate for it. A lot of hate for it. Just the best of everything, right? Just to have the best of everything. You know? That's the way they live. Do you live this way? Do you, do you live this way? You live this way with places like this, spiral staircases with the big skylight on, on top and in New York City and, and then upstate New York farm and, and place in Maine and who, meant, who knows how many other mansions and hidden places they had around all over this realm? Okay? Everywhere. Anywhere they want. Anywhere they want a home or want to have a place that's not just a home, but a decadent place to live. Okay? Furnished any way they want. <clears throat> all right? Any way they want. I'm trying to really break through to people so that they really understand it. Not jealousy. Just showing you again, they don't live the way you do. homes do you need? How many libraries do you need? How many fireplaces do you need? How many? How much is enough? How much is enough? How Yeah, that's your collection. Advertising. <clears throat> Wonderful, isn't it? From Manhattan to Maine. Look at the comments. What's interesting is the homes aren't extravagantly massive. They lived very humbly, didn't they? They didn't. They didn't need a hundred thousand square feet homes, so this person praises them. There's always people uh, that don't even understand this realm at all, you know.
Great, I was not disappointed, this person wrote. This video shows more than I expected. Wonderful. Great style, so understated. A lot of praise. A lot of praise by the masses. <clears throat> they love them. They love them. Love them. Rothschilds, ex more extravagant. Were they humble? They have understated mansions or castles or chateaus. Let's take a look and see a little bit here. What's it like being a Rothschild? Well, of course, I'm the wrong person to ask because I was born a Rothschild and I'm still a Rothschild, so I didn't know what it's like to be anyone else. So, um, I think you, you become aware the name has a kind of pulling power and the name sometimes gets, you know, gets a second take. And when, when I was younger, I found that very off-putting because I didn't feel that I lived up to this extraordinary reputation. I didn't live up to the magnificence. I didn't feel I was particularly good at anything. So I think it took me to get older and to establish my own career then to, to see it actually as quite an honor, really, to be part of this extraordinary tradition. The story really begins in Frankfurt, in the Jewish ghetto in the city, and the name Rothschild comes from the name of the house of their ancestors, which was the house of the Red Shield. So the dynasty was really established by Meyer Amschel Rothschild, who was born in 1743 or 1744, and he set up home in Frankfurt. And he married a member of, um, an, of another Jewish family called Gutla Schnapper, and between them they had 19 children, of which 10 survived, five girls and five boys. So the Judengasse um, was in Frankfurt, and it was built to house originally, I think it was something like 60 Jewish families, and within a matter of decades, there were you know, there were several hundred families. There were thousands of people living in a street that was a few yards wide, and I think it was about a hundred yards long. The houses were so densely packed together that light hardly got in there. And now my family, the Rothschilds, um, lived in a house that was 14 feet wide. So you can imagine it was a very cramped uh, environment, and you can also imagine what the impetus was to get out of there. It's very hard to imagine the extent of the restrictions. They had to spend every night in the ghetto. They had to wear clothing which identified them as Jews. And the park sat outside them, a note is saying, no pigs, no Jews. So it was an incredibly restrictive society, and therefore astonishing that Mara. <laughs> yes, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just his voice. Um, that's what it was. The voice was just kind of making me giggle a little bit, but sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'll carry on here. They look extremely impressed even to this day, don't they? Ramsel Rothschild was able to do what he did. Jews were allowed to deal in coins. And coins were a big thing at that time because you had so many small states. In I don't know what the coins were called in Frankfurt. I don't think they were called shekels, but they still deal in coins, if you see what I'm saying. So I don't know. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. Sorry. Carrying on. Germany and elsewhere that they were collected. And somehow Mar Amschel Rothschild became friendly with the Prince of Hesse and succeeded in first selling him coins. Oh yeah, somehow he just became friends with the prince when he lives in a Jewish ghetto in Germany. That makes sense, right? Does that make sense to you? Does that does, does your family story really add up? Story. I can't cover all of this, but I watched it. It may be worth watching to you. It may not. It was not new information to me. Um, I have watched a lot of documentaries, and even there's even a movie based on them. Okay. Um, story, people. I've I've looked into this stuff. 
it's like a Rothschild love fest. They're praising their own family and yeah. Anyways. This is the this is in the Rothschild style. Okay? They live very differently from you. Very differently. If you want to check this out, it's very easy to find. Just type this in here. If I forget to put a link, no problem. Type this in to a YouTube search. You know how to do, use YouTube searches on your laptop or your phone? The Rothschild family and Waddiston. That's all you have to do. This will pop up. 3.7 million views four years ago. These things get big views, big views, apparently. Shifting gears here. What happens to others in this matrix that are not so blessed by the matrix? That don't have assistance, favoritism, help. You might even say they get cursed by this matrix. Let's see. You want to see? Let's see here. Matias is the healthiest yeah. kid that there was. I mean, never got sick, was all into sports, all about school. Last week of June, he had flu-like symptoms. We visited the doctor and he had high fevers. His body was, it was red and he was also showing some rashes, which they told us that was due to the high fever. And that was for about four to five days. And then mom spent the night with Matias that night and he wasn't doing too well. His body that night was glowing red and really rushed up so he was feeling weak and I ran him to the emergency room when I arrived they checked him and they told me he had pneumonia but we thought it was just flu-like symptoms that was pneumonia and it was serious he was getting oxygen just getting you know his saturation was running a little bit low and stuff and then he just all of a sudden went to cardiac arrest he went to cardiac arrest for about six minutes we were asked to step out of the room the doctors all rushed into the room try to get a Get his vital signs. They were able to get his vital signs. The doctor said that they, they had to they had to put him on ECMO. He had to be intubated. He had to be on life support. That was the only thing that they could do for him. They told us that it's possible that Matias wouldn't make it that night. I noticed that he started to move the shoulders, and I said that to the doctors. And that day, they started to to do a, a little test with him to see if he responded. And he started to respond that day. They tried to, to say to him, Matias, do you hear us, Matias? And I started to scream to him and to say to him, Matias, show them that you are here. Show them that you are here, Matias. And he started to move all his body. That was a beautiful moment for us. They said that maybe he's going to lose that leg. And after that procedure, they came and they say to, to us, the other leg, don't look good too, and also the the hands. Yeah. Well, when we got oh. the news of the left leg, we we accepted it. We said, okay, if yeah. this is what has to happen, but he's gonna stay with us. We were begging the doctors to be like, please, he's all about school. He's all about. He wants to be an engineer. Please do whatever you have to do for his hands. And he cried and cried and cried, and we cried too a lot that day. And after the surgery, and he hugged us. That was incredible to see because he's really resilient he's like sorry i have to break in here i want to talk about a fucked up place very resilient but can you imagine going through that as a kid that has dreams of actually doing something here in this place that doesn't know he doesn't know it's a hell realm when he wants to run and be an engineer and, you know, be in sports and everything else in this place. And this is, this is what happens to him out of nowhere, a rare infection and amputations. Like imagine that, just fucking imagine that the, the way that some, it's the luck of the draw in this place is what I'm trying to get at. It is heartbreaking, and it's also the luck of the draw. And what I mean by that is I'm trying to tell people, this could be you. This could be me. 
if I came back here. Do you understand? This could be me. This could be you. Whether you're a man, woman, whoever, whatever, you could be older than me, younger than me. It doesn't matter who, who you are. That's the way this place is set up. Talk about a sick place that would do this to a kid. Okay? And you just saw the way Rothschilds live, the way the Rockefellers live, and you already know how, how royal families live. Think about it. Think about it. Trying to really deprogram people with this stuff. If you don't see that this place is a fucking hell realm and a rigged reality, I don't know what it'll take. I don't know what more I can show you. I don't know. I'm trying my best. I risk my channel all the time. Putting in a year's worth of work, working my ass off to build this. Could be gone. I'm just trying to show you things. I'm trying to deprogram you. Okay? Some don't see it. Some could watch these videos and, and just argue in the comments. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't know. It's, it's so obvious. It's so obvious. If you can't see, I think you're, you have some, something spiritually wrong or something spiritually blocking you. Something like that. Okay, this is what I need to to get better. Okay. And we tell him that you know he's a he's he's a miracle. He 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 is a miracle. And and I, we express that to him. We say you know we have to be grateful. You are alive, Matias Uribe. You are all here. Your heart, your mind, you are here. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna be at the beginning. We're gonna be your arms and legs. We're gonna help you out. We're gonna get through this together. It's a simple fact that that we could sit next to him and and laugh together and just you know yes. tell him I love you and just here i love you dad you're the best dad you're the best mom in the world that means everything to us if he could do it if he's laying in that bed right now and he's not complaining about nothing who are we to complain i just want to say he doesn't have much choice but to accept it and carry on okay he is very strong and resilient but he shouldn't have to go through this hell you understand it shouldn't be this way this is wrong to take that away from him and have him live the rest of his life that way. No legs and no hands. Do you understand? I know they still have him, but they didn't want to lose him. I understand that, but it's so fucked up. This place is so fucked up. So heartbreaking. It's devastating. It's sick. It's sadistic. It, it is... There's no word strong enough for this, okay? Hope you understand this. I really hope it gets through to people. To say, what more to say? It's just so obvious. It's a rigged reality. It's really fucking rigged. It is a hell realm. It is a hell realm. All right, I think I'm going to end the video back here with Cypher. Okay? looking at that matrix fake illusion piece of steak it's in the matrix it's not real it tastes real it smells real it seems real looking at it wondering how they can make it seem so real he even wants his mind wiped so he never he'll, like ignorance is bliss to him he, so he'll never realize he's in a matrix he wants to believe it completely be immersed in it so everything seems real. Food, drinks, fame, money, his lifestyle. He wants the easy life, but he, it's fake, but he won't know. He'll just be mind wiped from realizing he went back into the matrix. That's what he wants. You understand? You understand this? For steak and wine, fame, mansions money, feeling important, probably women, you know, what he wants. 
wants to be in a fake realm because it's easier, more pleasure. Some people do want the truth at any cost, but that's not normal. That's not the norm, okay? This person said, it is just difficult to believe that humans are slaves and used as batteries. They show you the truth in plain sight, and people don't want to see it. They show you in films, and people just think it's unbelievable, and even in a movie, they don't want to see the truth. I don't know how to get through the people, the normies in these mainstream comments here, but uh, I don't know how to get through to most people in this realm. They don't want the truth. They prefer the lies. The lies are easier. They feel better. I'm going to end this video here. I hope you learned something. I hope you think about this. Take care. Mad love. Good night, everyone. Bye.